Um, what I want to do today is get our, our session started, but I wanted to give you a little bit of background about um, the, the setup of this conference and how we came about doing it. Um, uh, the Atlas Center administration, Lisa and myself and others, had wanted to put on a conference on aging and driving. Again, we put one on before several years ago. And one of the things we wanted to do was work with other UTCs. And so I asked Beth Yakubowski, our administrator, to go and look at the websites of all these other UTCs and find out who's doing what in aging and driving. She came back with a pile of things. So a lot of UTCs doing work in, in aging and driving, and that was very impressive. And as I looked through it, I noticed that there were two centers in particular that seemed to be doing quite a bit of really good work. And so we went to those centers to see if they wanted to participate in this conference. And they both said, um, they were both very enthusiastic, and they both immediately said, yes, we want to participate. So they are sponsoring, they are co-sponsoring uh, this conference. Um, they are the ones that are bringing our lunches to us uh, yesterday and today. And I wanted to give them an opportunity to say a little bit about their centers or whatever else they, they want to tell you. So uh, I will bring them up. So the first is um, Yoon Oh, Jun Oh. Uh, he's the director of the Transportation Research Center for Livable Communities at Western Michigan University. Hey, thank you. All right, good morning. My name is Jun Oh, and I'm the director of Transportation Research Center for Livable Communities. So we are also one of the tier one uh, UTC, and so we are focusing on, as it says, livable communities. In the category of the uh, livable communities, we are dealing with uh, non-motorized transportation and uh, transit services, and transportation services for people with a disability and also the aged population. So one of the reasons we are here is actually we are also dealing with the aging population and those research problems. I think that this topic is always, I'm saying that this is not research for other people, other older people. This is a research for ourselves when we are getting that age. Probably 20 years later, everybody will be one of those people. So that I'm always saying that I'm doing this research for myself. Right? And also, I'm hearing a lot of other complaints from the US citizens. Hey, maybe I'm a, I may want to live in other countries, like European countries or Asian countries, where they have better transportation services, public side. Because when I, we get aged, I don't think I would drive. And I don't expect my son to come pick me up every day. So that we have to have some solution in the future. It's not just a matter of our transportation itself, it is our daily uh, lives. So that we are hoping that we are addressing all those aging issues in this, this uh, uh, symposium. And also I hope we can continue similar activities in the future. I mean, I'm going to conclude this one. We have a very short minute, right? All right, thank you so much. The other UTC that is sponsoring the conference is the Center for Accessibility and Safety for an Aging Population, and that's directed by Dr. John Sabanjo. Good morning, everybody, again. Uh, my name is John Sabanjo. I'm from Tallahassee, Florida. Uh, I'm a professor of civil engineering at Florida State University, and I'm here to talk about our UTC. We are very happy to co-sponsor this um, conference. Uh, the reason I'm using this slide is one, we are new on the block, it's a new UTC, we're only about two years old, and I'm trying to sell ourselves as much as possible. So basically this, um, of course we live in Florida, so there's a good motivation to have a research in this area. And uh, you can see the acronym ASAP, uh, Accessibility and Safety for an Aging Population. And I'm just going to use a couple of slides here to better illustrate. We are a partnership of three universities, with the primary one being Florida State University in Tallahassee. And what is unique about our UTC is we are very multidisciplinary. Uh, as everybody see in this conference, there's a lot of uh, importance of human factors and psychology. So we have that as a component. Uh, but we are primarily housed in the civil engineering department with uh, people in traffic and transportation. We also have people from social science, uh, psychology, uh, sorry, um, 
geography, urban planning, and the other two universities are Florida a and which is an HBCU, and University of North Florida. And we have people from Architectural Engineering, School of Allied Health, and also School of Engineering. And if you remember from MAP21, when we went for this competition, there was uh, five areas from the federal government that we were interested in. So we focused mostly on safety, uh, with a secondary effort on livable communities. And everybody in the UTC know we had about $4 million uh, with 50% cost share over the, I think it's finishing in September 2018, and we also applied for a new competition. We have a very good external and internal advisory boards, and we've gone through two cycles of funding. Uh, we do a lot of outreach and educational activities, and I'm going to show you a picture of, of the last one we did last, uh, last year. Uh, we had a transportation week last year, which was very uh, well attended, including um, conference, including speeches, uh, keynote speeches, and inviting people in the community. And we have something called car feed. Are everybody familiar with what the car feed is? So we, we had people do that. Uh, it was very well attended. And also, before I forget, there's a website um, shown over there. That's our UTC website. You can always go there. We invited high school students, middle school students, middle, middle school students. And I was telling somebody yesterday here, we have a very good uh, ASCE student chapter, which also helps us during our activities. And we have some uh, driving simulator demonstration to some of the people who attended. And research, we, we tend to focus a lot on research uh, since we are starting, and we have to get all those publications and metrics for the UTC. And you can see we intentionally want to be a little bit diverse. We have research in the primary traffic safety crash areas, where we also do um, we have things on um, urban planning in terms of, um, you can see the last project over there, in terms of measuring access to goods. One of our PIs was here yesterday to talk, uh, Dr. Osgovin. And the new research, we actually, again, what I see here is that we in engineering need to complement a lot of the human factors aspect. So we actually have research on biomechanics of older people getting injured in accidents, and uh, that's ongoing, it's almost finished. We have a new project on community resilience, um, talk about how people can survive in terms of their roadway being destroyed or bridges, especially the older people. And luckily in Florida, we have good information on older people. And again, we always, I would say maybe 50% of our projects are the traditional crash, uh, traffic accident type of research involving older people, but we're also doing new things um, in the new also, we're going to be going to connected vehicles uh, in terms of affecting aging people. Uh, outreach, we are very lucky to have good access to outreach um, sources. We have developing courses. Uh, we have a lot of student pilot projects, mostly PhD students. We have fellowships. We hold brown bag lectures. And as you saw yesterday, there's a pro group called Safe Mobility for Life. We are really involved with them. Their director, Gail Hall, is on our advisory board, and we're always in touch with her. Also, FSU has a focus on longevity. They have a very popular center called Pepe Institute on Aging and Public Policy, and also Institute on Successful Longevity. So we have access to things to do. We just have to do them. Thank you. <laughs>